What are X-rays? X-rays are a form of ionizing radiation. They are part of the electromagnetic spectrum and have sufficient energy to cause ionization. They contain more energy than ultraviolet waves, but less energy than gamma rays. The X-rays produced pass through the patient and onto a detector mechanism which produces an image. The resulting image on the X-ray film is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional structure. Materials of low density appear darker than materials of high density. Some important chest X-ray views are PA view or posterior anterior view, AP view or anterior posterior view or supine view and lateral view. The standard view is a PA erect chest x-ray. All chest x-rays are taken PA erect unless otherwise stated. In a PA view, the patient stands with their anterior chest wall up against an x-ray film. The x-ray tube is placed optimally 6 feet behind the patient, so the x-rays pass in the posterior anterior direction. The patient takes a deep breath and holds it during the x-ray to ensure there is adequate inspiration. Now the reasons for performing the film PA are Accurate assessment of the cardiac size due to minimal magnification and the scapulae can be rotated out of the way. There are some reasons for performing the film erect. One, gas passes upwards, so pneumothorax and free air underneath the diaphragm are more easily diagnosed. Two, fluid passes downwards, so pleural effusion is more easily diagnosed. 3. Lower lobe vessels are more prominent than upper lobe vessels on a normal chest x-ray due to the effect of gravity. If it were taken in the supine position, the mediastinal veins and upper lobe vessels may be more distended than normal, leading to misinterpretation. AP or supine chest x-ray is performed when the patient is too ill to stand. The x-ray tube is placed in front of the patient and the x-rays pass in the anterior posterior direction. The major disadvantage of AP or supine films when compared with PA films is that the mediastinum and cardiac size will appear wider on an AP or supine film due to venous distension and magnification. On the left-sided film, the superior mediastinum appears widened due to anterior-posterior magnification. Same patient, repeat chest x-ray film on the right side on the next day reveals that mediastinum is normal in PA view. Lateral chest x-ray is used to give further views of the lungs and heart and more details on the anatomical locations of lesions. It is rarely performed now as CT gives more information. While interpreting a chest x-ray, it is important to make an assessment of whether the x-ray is of diagnostic quality. In order to facilitate this, first pay attention to two radiographic parameters prior to checking for pathology, namely the quality of the film and patient dependent factors. Quality assessment. Is the film correctly labeled? Does the x-ray belong to the correct patient? Check the patient's name on the film. Have the left and right side markers been labeled correctly or does the patient really have dextrocardia? Lastly, has the projection of the radiograph PA versus AP been documented? Assessment of exposure quality. One. On a high quality radiograph, the vertebral bodies should just be visible through the heart. Two, 
If the vertebral bodies are not visible, then an insufficient number of X-ray photons have passed through the patient to reach the X-ray film. As a result, the film will look whiter, leading to potential overcalling of pathology. 3. If the film appears too black, then too many photons have resulted in overexposure of the X-ray film. This blackness results in pathology being less conspicuous and may lead to undercalling. The spinous processes of the vertebrae and the medial ends of the clavicles are landmarks to assess rotation. The ribs should be checked on every chest X-ray. Now patient dependent factors, assessment of patient rotation, the medial ends of both clavicles should be equidistant from the spinous process of the vertebral body projected between the clavicles. If this is not the case, then the patient is rotated either to the left or to the right. If the patient is rotated to the left, the medial ends of the clavicles will be deviated to the left of the spinous processes and if the patient is rotated to the right, the medial ends of the clavicles will be deviated to the right of the spinous processes. The right-sided film is a supine chest x-ray of a trauma patient who is significantly rotated to the right. Now assessment of adequacy of inspiratory effort. It is ascertained by counting either the number of visible anterior or posterior ribs. If 6 complete anterior or 10 posterior ribs are visible, then the patient has taken an adequate inspiratory effort. In the right sided film, the yellow numbers represent anterior rib count. Conversely, fewer than 6 anterior ribs implies a poor inspiratory effort and more than 6 anterior ribs implies hyperexpanded lungs. The x-ray showed here demonstrates hyperinflation of lungs as there are more than 6 anterior ribs. If a poor inspiratory effort is made, or if the chest x-ray is taken in expiration, then several potentially spurious findings can result, for example, apparent cardiomegaly, apparent hilar abnormalities, apparent mediastinal contour abnormalities, and the lung parenchyma tends to appear of increased density, that is white lung. This expiratory film is falsely showing hyperdensity of lung parenchyma, which can lead to chest X-ray misinterpretation. Normal anatomy Side As you look at the chest X-ray, the left side of the radiograph is the patient's right side and the right side of the radiograph is the patient's left side. Normal lung markings are actually blood vessels in the lungs. They are visible on a chest radiograph as the x-rays are absorbed by the iron in the blood. Vascular pattern Arteries and veins branch vertically to upper and lower lobes. The upper lobe vessels have a smaller diameter than the lower lobe vessels on an erect chest x-ray. The black dotted line is the level at which the pulmonary vessels enter and leave the lungs. The vessels are marked in red. The vessels branching upwards are generally smaller than the vessels branching downwards. This is due to the effects of gravity. Trachea and major bronchi. The large airways are visible on most good quality chest X-rays. They contain air and so are of lower density or blacker than the surrounding soft tissues. The trachea is placed usually just to the right of the midline as it passes to the right of the aorta. The trachea can be pathologically pushed or pulled to either side. 
The trachea branches at the carina into the left and right main bronchi. The position of the trachea on a lateral film is labeled in the right sided image. Normal hilar position. Commonly, the left hilum is higher than the right. Both hilar region should be concave. This results from the superior pulmonary vein crossing the lower lobe pulmonary artery. The point of intersection is known as the hilar point. Cardiothoracic ratio. It is measured by dividing cardiac size by thoracic width. Cardiac size is measured by drawing vertical parallel lines down the most lateral points of the heart and measuring between them. Thoracic width is measured by drawing vertical parallel lines down the inner aspect of the widest points of the rib cage and measuring between them. The cardiothoracic ratio can then be calculated. The cardiothoracic ratio should be less than 0.5. A cardiothoracic ratio of greater than 0.5 in a good quality film suggests cardiomegaly. This chest x-ray is showing a cardiothoracic ratio of greater than 0.5, so there is cardiomegaly. The mediastinum is the central compartment of the thoracic cavity. It contains the heart, the great vessels, esophagus, trachea, phrenic nerve, vagus nerve, sympathetic chain, thoracic duct, thymus, and central lymph nodes. Cardiomediastinal contour. On the right side, there are superior vena cava and right atrium. Cardiac apex consists of left ventricle and on the left side, there are left ventricle left atrial appendage, pulmonary trunk, and aortic arch. Some important cardiovascular anatomy of the mediastinum on a lateral x-ray are left atrium, left ventricle, inferior vena cava, right ventricle, right pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery, and aorta. normal aortic knuckle. The aortic knuckle represents the left lateral edge of the aorta as it arches backwards over the left main bronchus. The contour of the descending thoracic aorta can be seen in continuation from the aortic knuckle. Displacement or loss of definition of these contours can indicate diseases such as aortic aneurysm or adjacent lung consolidation. This chest x-ray is showing markedly dilated thoracic aorta involving the arch and descending aorta. This is due to a thoracic aortic aneurysm. The aortopulmonary window is located between the aortic knuckle and the left pulmonary artery. It is a space where abnormal enlargement of mediastinal lymph nodes can be seen on a chest x-ray. In this x-ray, there is a large calcified mediastinal lymph node at the aortopulmonary window. Sternal wires are evidence of prior coronary artery bypass grafting. Right paratracheal stripe. From the level of the clavicles to the azygous vein, the right edge of the trachea is seen as a thin white line or stripe. The left side of the trachea is not so well defined because the position of the aortic arch and great vessels. Thickening of the paratracheal stripe may represent pathology such as a paratracheal mass or enlarged lymph nodes. This patient has an enlarged lymph node in the right paratracheal region, resulting in widening of the right paratracheal stripe.
Breast shadows are normal on chest x-rays and should not be mistaken for opacities within the lungs. A degree of variation in breast size is normal. This is a case of congenital breast size asymmetry and not pathologic. The x-ray is showing marked asymmetry in the size of the breasts. The left breast shadow appears larger. Nipple shadows. The nipples are clearly seen on this chest x-ray. If there is any doubt that a nipple shadow could be a lung nodule, then a repeat x-ray should be performed. Metallic nipple markers are used to indicate the position of the nipples. This is the lateral projection showing the nipple shadows as nodular opacities. The four zones of the frontal chest x-ray are apical zone, upper zone, mid zone and lower zone. Apical zone is the portion of the lungs that lie above the inferior margin of the clavicles. Upper zone extends from the inferior margin of the clavicles to the superior aspect of the hilum. Mid zone extends between the superior and inferior aspects of the hilum. Lower zone extends inferiorly from the inferior aspect of the hilum to the hemidiaphragm. Assessing the lung zones, each zone is compared with its opposite side. If the lungs appear asymmetrical, it should be determined if this is due to asymmetry of normal structures, technical factors such as rotation or lung pathology. If there is genuine asymmetry, decide which site is abnormal. Some diseases result in bilateral lung abnormalities, making comparison of left with right difficult. In these cases, it is still important to assess each zone in turn to avoid missing subtle abnormalities on the background of abnormal lungs. Lobes and fissures. The left lung is divided into two lobes upper and lower by the oblique fissure. The right lung has two fissures, oblique fissure and horizontal fissure which separate the lung into three lobes, upper, middle and lower. Each lobe has its own visceral pleural covering. The red area is right upper lobe, green is right middle lobe and purple is right lower lobe, olive is left upper lobe and blue is left lower lobe. Now this is the lateral view of right lung. And lateral view of left lung. Hemidiaphragms. The right hemidiaphragm is slightly higher than the left. The liver is located inferior to the right hemidiaphragm. The stomach and spleen are located inferior to the left hemidiaphragm. Now lateral view. Lateral x-rays show the right hemidiaphragm extending from posterior to anterior. The left hemidiaphragm becomes indistinct at the lower edge of the heart. In this x-ray, elevation of the left hemidiaphragm is noted. Shadows of bowel and stomach bubbles are seen under it. The curvature of both hemidiaphragms should be assessed to identify diaphragmatic flattening. The highest point of a hemidiaphragm A should be at least 1.5 cm above a line drawn from the cardiophrenic to the costophrenic angle B. Here flattened hemidiaphragms are seen along with bilateral overinflated lungs. 
increased lucency and relatively smaller cardiac shadow. The costophrenic angles are formed by the lateral chest wall and the dome of each hemidiaphragm. The cardiophrenic angles are formed by the cardiac border and the dome of each hemidiaphragm. On lateral view, the anterior and posterior costophrenic angles are formed by the chest wall and the dome of each hemidiaphragm. This is a case of right-sided pleural effusion where the right costophrenic angle is obliterated with a meniscus noted. Now the ABCDE of chest x-rays. A is for airway, B is for breathing, C is for circulation, D is for disability and E is for everything else. At first, airway. Look at the trachea, right and left main stem bronchi and intermediate bronchus. What to look for? Tracheal deviation, carinal angle. In this x ray, the trachea is markedly pushed to the right due to mass effect by left sided pleural effusion. Here the subcarinal angle which is shown in yellow solid line is also enlarged much more than the upper limit of normal taken to be 90 degrees. Now breathing. The basic rule is that black indicates air and white indicates no air. There are four main things to look at. 1. Are the lungs uniformly expanded? Two. Compare the lung fields and look for white areas or shadows. 3. Look around the edges of each lung and the costophrenic angles. 4. Look for the four silhouettes. Right heart border, left heart border, right hemidiaphragm and left hemidiaphragm. In this x-ray, there is almost complete collapse of the left lung due to pneumothorax. This is a case of right lung collapse, homogeneous opacification of the right lung with the trachea pulled to the right side. The cardiac shadow is not visualized due to mediastinal shift to the right side. This patient has a history of pneumonectomy. Opacified right hemithorax is noted with severe deviation of the trachea to the right and hyperexpanded left lung. This chest x-ray shows a large left mid-zone mass. This x-ray shows airspace consolidation with air bronchograms in right upper and mid-zone. Here, obliteration of left costophrenic angle is noted with a white plural based dome shaped opacity tracking along the costophrenic angle and lateral chest wall, suggestive of loculated pleural effusion or empyma. Now circulation. Look at the cardiac size and great vessels which are pulmonary vessels and aorta. What to look for? Dextrocardia, cardiomegaly, left atrial enlargement, widened mediastinum, hyalur enlargement, hiatus hernia. This is a case of dextrocardia. The heart is positioned inversely, gastric bubble on the left, liver shadow on the right. This is a case of left atrial enlargement. Cardiomegaly and a double contour is seen through the right side of the heart.
The more medial line is the enlarged left atrium which is shown in white dotted line and the right heart border is more lateral which is shown in blue dotted line. And the subcarinal angle which is shown in yellow solid line is also enlarged. And the subcarinal angle which is shown in yellow solid line is also enlarged. This is a case of hilar enlargement where there is bilateral enlargement of the hilar in keeping with lymphadenopathy. This is a case of hiatus hernia. There is mediastinal enlargement due to a hiatus hernia with gastrointestinal protrusion into the mediastinum. Now disability. Follow the edges of each individual bone to look for fractures. Look for areas of blackness within each bone and compare the density of the bones on both sides. They should be the same. What to look for? Rib fractures, other bony abnormalities. In this x-ray, multiple displaced left rib fractures are seen which are pointed with arrows in the right-sided image. Now everything else. Look at the hemidiaphragms specifically for air under the diaphragm. Look at the edges of the body and all over the film. In a female patient, look for the breast shadows. Look for foreign bodies and other unnatural presences. What to look for? Air under the diaphragm. Subcutaneous emphysema or surgical emphysema, mastectomy, foreign bodies and medical interventions. This is a case of pneumoperitoneum, a frontal erect chest x-ray showing free air under the diaphragm. In this x-ray, there is marked subcutaneous emphysema extending bilaterally. The x-ray is of a patient with right mastectomy demonstrating a hyperlucent right lower hemithorax. Here, PA and lateral chest x-rays showing a foreign body in the right main bronchus. Now medical interventions. This patient has prosthetic aortic and mitral valves and a cardiac pacemaker. Silhouette sign refers to the loss of normal borders between thoracic structures. The differential attenuation of X-ray photons by two adjacent structures defines this silhouette. The silhouette sign refers to the pathological loss of this differentiation. In short, it denotes that a mediastinal border can only be obscured by a pathology which is in direct anatomical contact. Now, silhouette signs on frontal chest x-ray. Here, loss of silhouette is correlated with the site of pathology. Right paratracheal stripe is related to the right upper lobe. Right heart border to the right middle lobe right hemidiaphragm to the right lower lobe, aortic knuckle to the left lower lobe, left heart border to the lingular segment of the left upper lobe, and left hemidiaphragm to the left lower lobe. Silhouette signs on lateral chest x-ray. Posterior border of the heart is related to the left lower lobe, anterior right hemidiaphragm to the right middle lobe, posterior right hemidiaphragm to the right lower lobe. In this x-ray, there is an opacity obscuring the left hemidiaphragm. And we know that loss of left hemidiaphragm silhouette indicates that the site of pathology is the left lower lobe. Therefore, the pathology is in the left lower lobe. 
In this x-ray, the distinct silhouette of the right heart border is lost. Loss of right heart border silhouette indicates that the site of pathology is the right middle lobe. Therefore, the pathology is in the right middle lobe. In this x-ray, there is an airspace opacity obscuring the right hemidiaphragm. Right hemidiaphragm silhouette is related to the right lower lobe. Therefore, the pathology is in the right lower lobe. In this x-ray, there is a partial effacement of the left heart border. Left heart border silhouette is related to the lingular segments of the left upper lobe. Therefore, the pathology is in the lingula. In this lateral x-ray, there is a density obscuring the posterior border of heart. And the silhouette of posterior border of the heart is related to the left lower lobe. Therefore, the pathology is in the left lower lobe. 